Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am Sanya Virani and my topic for today is the art of saying no. This two letter word, how difficult is it to use? Every time we have something going on, yes, okay, I'll do it. Someone, let's say we have a friend asking us for a favor. Okay, sure, no worries. We have a family meeting to attend, however late at night it might get. Okay, let's go. There's a Zoom call at 10 a.m. in the morning, let's say even 7 a.m. Oh, I have to do it. Let's go, do it. All of these things happening with us. And what's the one thing we cannot do? Say no. It's so awkward, you feel so, um, let's say, you feel so awkward, you feel very guilty of not being able to say no. So, what is this thing? What if I told you there is a way of saying no based on the situation, based on the people you're working with, right? So to begin with, I will start with a tiny example of these two cups over here. Yeah? Can I get some help for someone to hold me the mic? Can I please have someone to hold me the mic? So, this is your cup. It's full of water, full of positivity, full of energy. This is your emotional energy. And this over here is your surroundings and the situations you face in life. Every time you say yes to something, you're pouring in water. The next time you're saying, something, you're saying yes to something else, more water. How much do you have? Keeps on decreasing every time you say yes. This is your emotional energy. What if you pour it all? You hardly have two drops for yourself. How are you going to say yes to something else when you don't even have enough time for your own self? Thank you so much. So, again, so many things to do. There's too much to think about, too much on our plates. Then, why do we not say no? Firstly, we want to be polite. We want to be accommodating. Yeah, it's okay, you know, I will do it. It's okay, yeah, let's go on. It's fine. Second, we don't want to let others down. We don't want them to think of us as nasty or too busy or she thinks too much of herself or this person is too into their own world. They're not friendly. They're not helpful. Yeah? Uh, the third thing, we don't want to damage relationships. If I say no to this person once, then they might not take me as a friend. They might not even confide in me. Sometimes some people literally break friendships because you didn't help with them for a certain thing once in their life. And the last thing, FOMO, fear of missing out. If I don't volunteer in this event, they will think that I am not capable, I am to this, I am to that, and they will not give me the next event to volunteer. So because you don't want to miss out on the next thing, you are sacrificing, because you don't want to miss out on the next thing, you're sacrificing your time, your mental health, and your peace for right now. So instead, what do we do when such things happen? We say, ah, okay, I'll just do it, let's go. You settle and you say yes. Second thing, which is very damaging, is what? Attack and say no. Will you do this for me? No, I don't have time. No, I don't want to do it. No, this, no, that. Third thing, you're trying to avoid. Ah, joyless, whatever will happen, maybe they'll forget about the situation. Six ways of saying no. Now again, disclaimer in bold capital letters, disclaimer. You have to see the people you're talking to. If they're older than you, there's a certain level of respect that has to be maintained. If they are, let's say, at a certain position, there's a certain way of manipulating your words in order to get done of what you want. So the short form for this was actually Dr. Burr. Dr. Burr, D-R-R, D-R-B-E-R-R, which means the first way is direct no. I'm sorry, I cannot do this, done. Right? Once you say no, over and out. Second one is reflect. I understand that this and this is happening, but I cannot possibly attend this event. Please excuse me. So 
there you have your reflect. Reasoned. You're telling them, listen, I have deadlines this week, so what if it's next week? I can do it then. And there are other ones, but due to time, I will not be doing it. In order to wrap up everything, I will just say Steve Jobs said, the ability to say no is difficult, but the most effective way is to remain focused and not lose sight of what is important. A very famous quote we have in Gujarati, ek na so suk. Thank you so much. Questions, judges? I don't have a question, I have a comment. I'm gonna come to you to learn how to say no. I say yes to too many things and I could literally resonate a lot to what you were saying, um, but maybe I will still end with a question. Have you ever been in a situation personally where you were scared to say no and went along with it and then regretted your decision of saying yes? You've given us a lot of advice and tips on how to say no. Have you ever said no and then later regretted it? Okay, so a situation where I had and I said no and then later regretted on that no. There's many. So um, usually what I had during my Form 5, Form 6, I didn't do very well in Form 5, so I had to reset. So the one thing I had decided is during my exam time, I will not take any extracurricular activities, no matter how tempting it is. So there was a sports competition, there was um, a careers program, something like that, and something else as well going on. I think it was related to madrasa. So I took the madrasa related thing. I said yes for that. It went well, alhamdulillah. Then came the careers project. So I had told one of my assistant, like a friend, I told her, listen, I will be very busy and you know how chaotic girls can get. So you know what? You handle this event on your own. And she was like, yeah, sure, you know, I'm always there for you, this, that, that. I was like, okay. Now me, trust issues, I, 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 don't, I don't trust them very well. So the event came, the teacher was in charge, gave her the thing. She procrastinated, she did nothing with the girls. Two random girls came, picked up the whole event, messed it up so bad. So even though I had an exam that week, I had to interfere. So for me saying no at that time, I should have said yes, because at that time, if I would have handled it, it would have become better. But since I said no, I regretted it, and eventually I had to do it. Next question. Uh, thank you uh, so much, Sanya, for that. Uh, I guess my question would be that before today, have you sort of thought about this before and have you been in scenarios where you had to, because, you know, as Oreda I mentioned, I think this is, it's, if we do a survey, I'm sure it's a very widespread problem. A lot of us, you know, can, cannot say no. Have you been in a situation where you had to convince someone to say no to something? And how did you go about it? I mean, today you had the PowerPoint and you know, you had this platform, etc. But on a one-to-one -one basis, have you ever had to do that? And how did you sort of manage that? Okay, it's happened to me multiple times. So I am a teacher in Madrasa. And being a teacher in Madrasa, you don't get to decide what grade you want. You just say, I want to teach. Okay, what grades are you comfortable teaching? they give you something. Um, I was in my form fives and sixes, so I didn't join madrasa at that time. But then I, later, after I was, I was done, I joined madrasa. And so they thought they would start me with the lowest of grades, and that's what I had mentally prepared myself with. They started me with four. So I got all the experiences of four. Now when I'm about to teach, they're telling me, go teach class ones and twos. Which is a very big difference because class fours can write, they can think, they can understand, they can read. Read, they can read. Class ones and twos. Bye, I need to go washroom, let's go with me. Buy this, buy that. So, because I got so frustrated once, every time 
the madrasa tries to give me a grade that is lower than those that can read and write, I find it very hard to say no because that is not something I'm used to with. Again, my mom keeps on telling me, say no, ek na so suk. You will be comfortable with the older kids, be comfortable with them. If you can't, then just don't do it at all. No offense to any of the madrasa people because I'm sure they will listen to this. But yeah, I think everyone should be comfortable in their own skin. Do not set your boundaries. I would tell everyone here, everyone watching, set your boundaries because your boundaries is what defines you. Thank you so much.